All right, so here we are, recording live in front of a studio audience. Jeff Nail here and Rozzy Robinson. We are making it happen. Coming to everybody with some questions, some thoughts. And uh, I mean, uh, you want to introduce yourself, my friend? Uh, uh, maybe hello. share, share, share uh, maybe like your age and like favorite subject, you know, All right. favorite thing to do. So my, I'm Rozzy, I'm 14 years old, and my favorite subject is science. And my favorite thing to do is play video games and sports. Got it, got it. What do you like most about science? Just how it's like a balance between both reading and math. Like, it's not more, it's like, it's like you read in it, but you also have to use like math in a sense. Got it. Got it. I like it. And what's like uh what's like the video game action looking like? What are you what are your favorite uh what's your favorite game right now? Uh, my favorite game would be Saints Row Four. Okay. I'm not familiar with that one. I'm not a gamer, but you, what, what's that about? So basically like your character. So it starts out where you're president of the United States and everything. And like you just customize your character and stuff. And then out of nowhere some aliens come. And like they just blow up the White House, and like you have to defend the White House and everything, and then you get captured. And it's like, you know, have, have you watched The Matrix? I have watched that. Okay, so like you know when Neo's like in the little pod. Yeah. So it's basically like you're in you you get taken by the aliens, and then you're in the pod, and like you have to break out the pod and everything, and escape to the uh escape the alien ship, and so you're walking through the ship and everything, and then just battling aliens and stuff and so you get to your ship and then it's like like okay like you're trying to break everybody else out of like the si simulation in a sense like you have to go into the matrix or the simulation and then like find your friend and then tell them come on we're in the simulation and everything and just cause havoc and it's pretty fun gotcha gotcha all right cool man cool well i appreciate you sharing a little bit about yourself my friend um you you had stated that you wanted to talk about uh your background a little bit our backgrounds what, what did you have in mind when you you said that like just how it was growing up and everything okay well, where, where would you like to start my friend when i was like five or six okay that's pretty specific right there i, I like it i like it what uh so where, where where are we starting? Take us back to Rozzy, age five or six. All right. So when I was about five, like I didn't really like anything until I saw Cars, like the movie, the Disney movie. Okay. And I saw the Cars, and I was like, Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! I want Cars! I want Cars! And so she used to give me like Hot Wheels, and like Hot Wheels are like these miniature car things, and you could do roll them around and stuff. You could build like big old tracks and everything. But, like my favorite car. It was like Lightning McQueen because he was like, ka-chow, ka-chow, ka-chow. So I had a bunch of Lightning McQueen stuff. I had a Lightning McQueen table, uh, Lightning McQueen uh, slippers that you slide around in. And it, it was just pretty fun. Like, my sheets on my bed were cars. It was just, overall, it was just car. Yeah. So what what um, what resonated? What Like, what uh, what did you like most about that movie? Why did it, uh, why did you relate to it to the point where all your stuff was cars because like how long mcqueen was like oh i'm in radiator springs i don't know anyone or anything and it was kind of like school it's like if you think about it like well, your first day of school is like or like kindergarten and it's like i don't know these people who are these people i don't know these people i oh, have to do this i don't know how to do that and everything and like how he had to um like get accustomed to their like building the road and more like get, making friends with mater and stuff Gotcha. Okay. I like it. I like it. So what, um, are you still into cars? Do you, do you watch, do you ever watch that in, like again or? Yeah, I actually watched it a couple of days ago. I, I watched it over again a couple of days ago with my sister. Gotcha. Gotcha. One of my, uh, childhood favorite movies is it hasn't been re remade. So like you might not have heard of it, but, uh, it's, uh, Oliver and company. So that was a Disney movie back in like the 80s that uh, it was about um, 
a stray dog, a couple of stray dogs. And um, it's kind of it's kind of like the life of pets, kind of where there's a stray dog and like uh, a cat, actually. And the cat gets out and is, you know, trying, you know, he's a stray cat as well. Or, and uh, he's trying to navigate the world and comes into this. Um, uh, he meets this stray dog and the stray dog shows him the ropes and they cause havoc on the city. It was pretty good. But uh, I've watched that like in my adult years and. And things but it's still good i mean like but i watch it and it looks a little dated you know it's not as up to date as the new cartoons and animated movies and things what did you like most about it uh the soundtrack was good i still remember some of the songs from the soundtrack and uh the uh the stray dog that oliver ran into was just like super cool at the time you know like it like he was uh you know, he was real, real smooth in the way he talked and like he, the way he acted and everything just seemed easy for him, you know. So I think uh, that was kind of uh, that, that, you know, that kind of like I related to that. Nice. Yeah. So what else? I mean, like I, I know you shared a movie, but uh, what what else is what else is the, your story like behind Rozzy, 14 year old? High school student. Oh, uh, like when I was little, like, I I didn't have a care. I was just I was really carefree, and like I was just looking at my pictures and everything. I'm like, wow, I was short. And, like it's just me. Like like I'm noticing me getting taller and taller, and it's just like wow, I small. And like I was looking at my baby pictures, like I think like a week ago, and it was like. Like, I was so tiny. And, like, if you didn't know, I was born early. And so, okay. like, I had to be, like, an incubator and everything. And it was, like, this big old crib, right? And it has, like, a bunch of machines attached. And it has tubes. And I had tubes. And I was just like, wow. Wow. I didn't know that, man. I'm learning something new about you today. And then I remember when we first met, or around the time when we first met, I don't know if it was, like, the second time or third time we went out, you were talking about how you were going to, uh, how tall you were planning on being. And at the time, I mean, like you were like below my shoulder. And I was like, all right. I mean, like you were pretty, I mean, you were pretty confident that you were going to be tall. And how do you, do you know how tall you are right now? Besides uh, I think I'm in, I think I'm in like the six foot area. Okay. I don't know. Like, I know I'm not like under five feet, but like I'm pretty I'm pretty sure I'm in a six feet area. Well, I would say that you I mean the last time I saw you, you were I'm five nine. Um I, I claim to be five nine, but I the last time I measured myself I was five nine and a half, but I don't I'm not I'm not really stuck on that point five. So I'm five nine and you were I mean, your eyes were over my eyes. I would say you were like 5'10 or 5'11 the last time we, we hung out, like before the pandemic. And you said that you got, you said that you've gotten taller. So, I mean, like you have to be about six foot now, at least. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. So, so Rozzy, like, you know, this tiny, this tiny, tiny baby. To Rozzy six foot today. Yeah. That's a big deal, man. It's a big deal. What um so you say you or when you were when you were saying that, what else what else do you think has, has changed with you besides getting taller, like uh growing up and like learning about life and school, whatever? My mindset on things. Okay. Like what? I, if you don't mind me asking. Hmm? I said, like, what if you don't mind me asking? Like, how I how I look at the world. Like, I don't look at the world like, oh, it's just some carefree place. We could just run around in the grass, and it's it's not. Like, there's like there's. I used to think there wasn't really any repercussions for my action. You know, so, like, uh, I didn't think that every action had a reaction or any reaction had an action. I was just yeah. I was just there. Okay. Do you can you remember? And you don't have to be specific if if you don't want to, but do you remember like a crossover point when you went from that carefree um, mindset to 
understanding that actions had consequences? Yeah. Yeah. What, what was that like? It was difficult. Okay. Like, I, was, I was coming into grasp, grasping like everything. Okay. Gotcha. So with your newfound wisdom, um, how do you approach life differently now? Like what, like did that change how you approach school or your, your how, like your, your family, like how did that change? Um, it changed how I approached my family and like I'm, I'm more cautious about asking certain things now. And it also changed my perception of school and like what school is for. Okay. Well, what, uh, if you don't mind, like what's, what do you see school for? as a 14 year old to me i see school as a way of preparing me for a job that i want okay like say i want to be a marine biology biologist i can like for what for my with my with my specific school like i can like ask my counselor hey can i have this class or hey can i come out of that class so yeah. like i can i can edit what I learned, so like what my passion, okay. what I'm. So. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Now, um, is that? It? Did you have anything else? In, like in terms of like how your uh, approach to a school look uh, changed? Uh, I'm sort of late more. I sort of am like caught like, on certain things. I put more effort into than others. Okay. Like if it's if it's an assignment. I'll I'll put it like put it first over some bell work for like if in the, in the same class if my teacher gives me an assignment and then like if she gives us bell work in the beginning of the class and I don't get through the bell work I'm gonna put the bell work aside and focus on my assignment because my assignment like for my grades my assignment cost uh costs more my grade than my bell work. Got you, got you. They call that what do they call that triage like a like a, a surgeon. Or a doctor, they have uh, you know higher priorities and, and lower priorities based on the severity of injuries and and uh, and so on and so forth. Where they you know somebody who is um, what is it? I can't remember like the the colors. I want to say red. If it's red, you know it's high priority. Like this has to get done immediately. But somebody that's green, they don't have like uh, you know fatal injuries, so to speak. They can they can sit and wait for a little bit and they just circle back to them after they've gotten the red person uh, under control. So that's kind of what you're doing like with your uh, your schoolwork. That's good. Understanding priorities, understanding what, like what weighs more, you know, what weighs less, so to speak. What's going to affect your grade more? That's yeah, cool. and I'm also more organized. Okay. Like if if I have a bunch of files, like to me that seems out of place. So I just put them. And my my teacher like um just taught me this, but like you can put you can make a file and you can make another like a couple other files and then you can have documents and stuff and you can put like specific documents into a file and then put that same file into an even bigger file. Got you. So you're talking about like uh, your cloud your cloud storage on a computer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you're organizing your cloud drive. Um, by like categories and subcategories so yeah. that you can easily find things. And honestly, it makes things easier. Like if somebody else has to go in your file, you know, that, that makes it easier for them as well. Yeah. And then another, another thing that you can potentially do is, I don't know if you're already doing it, but, um, you can act, you can uh, change the file names. Uh, yeah. You know, to like an intuitive name with the, uh, you know, something within the document and then also the date. And um, then you can use the search function so that you don't have to like search for things. Like physically, the computer will do the work for you or the search for you. Nice. Yes. Yeah. And I have um, named my documents too. Like, like I have a doc, I have a file where it's, um, it's freshman year and then have because I take three classes, and so like it'll have algebra one and like 
science uh, two or like science three or whatever. And like I'll just make each of them a file, name the file in there, then put like what documents go where in each file. Got it. Got it. I like it, man. I like it. Being organized, having like a, a process for like in terms of priority, and then you're taking ownership of your life by being able to go to your counselor and say like, hey, I want to learn more about this. So good job, man. What else? Is that it? With that, I mean, like in terms of that, um, like your mindset to towards school. I mean, yeah, pretty much. Got you. I like I understand more about like sports and how that's gonna affect school. So, yeah. But other than that, yeah. Okay. And how has uh, I mean, like, it's not really you can't really compare the two because you've changed um, schools. But I mean, like, it's pretty much the same. I mean, like, what what are the major differences, like the the advantages to uh, the virtual school that you're doing right now versus physically going into school um, before high school? So the ben the benefits, in my opinion, of going to virtual is I'm comfortable. Like, if I'm at school, I'm not as comfortable as me being at home. Okay. Me being comfortable at home means that I'm more relaxed and not let, there's not a million things coming inside my brain, a million thoughts. Gotcha, gotcha. I can kind of relate to that myself. It's like when you're at school, you're thinking, oh, that person's looking at me. Why are they looking? Or, oh, my, like, um, like, oh, I'm nervous. Oh, this chair stinks or like stuff like that. When you're at home, you're, you're in your environment, like you're comfortable, like you're not going to be thinking, oh, why is this person looking at me? Oh, why is this? Well, you might still say, oh, why is this this thing? But it's like, like you're more comfortable. I'm just, yeah. you're more comfortable. got it, got it. What, um, what, um, what are some disadvantages? Well, well, first of all, before we get into that, like, what, like, is that the the only advantage that you uh, that you see? Uh, no. Like with you, with it being online, like there's there's how can I say this? There's what? There's more room for you to do things. Okay. Like, cause I personally, I type faster than I write. So if I have to write something, like or like a like a speech or like a paragraph about something or like a report, I can type it faster than I can write. So that is going to be like somewhat faster. I can get things done faster. Okay. Gotcha. Any uh, anything else to add there? Like for uh, this is again still for like the advantages. No. Okay. All right. What about what about some disadvantages? Was what, what are some things that you either miss or you feel like uh, would be better in person? A disadvantage to learning online. I think is the engaging. Like when you when you see like, because you can't really see like what the other person is doing. Yeah, it's virtual, and so like you can't really pick up on like tone of voice, or like you can, but it's like less, or you can't like really make out facial expressions sometimes. So it's like communication. I'm just like, messing with you. <laughs> barriers where you, where you where you when you are communicating there's sometimes there are barriers yeah and yeah yeah for sure another disadvantage is if if your wi-fi goes out like because if you don't have internet access you can't really do things online yeah so like, if your internet is messed up you can't really get into your class so you can't really join the the call or anything yeah has that has has that affected you or your classmates in terms of like the internet, like having access to the internet? Yeah, a couple of my classmates have. Gotcha, gotcha. Have they? Has it been like where they couldn't get in the the whole class? Did it like take away from the class, or did did it fix it pretty fast? Like most of the time, all you have to do is reset your computer, and then it works. But there's sometimes when like you can't join the call, like, like you'll try to join the call and it doesn't work. Yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, I, like if you can't log in, I mean, like it's yeah, it's a lost cause pretty much. Yeah. Wow. Any anything else with the uh, the um, negative aspect of it? No. Okay. Well, that, I mean, that's not that's not too too bad. I mean, like it sounds sounds like you're adapting. Yeah. But I mean, like you you are taking uh, less classes than you would uh, virtual than you would be in person, right? Yeah. Okay. So how does that, how does that work out? Do you know like uh in terms of like your your credits and things to uh to graduate? Like have they talked have they, they talked talk about it? And they said that we have to get credits for the class. So like this this year it would be like a half point, like a point five, and then like the next the next time you take the class it'll be like a whole point. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I guess time will tell. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but you're you are you uh, <clears throat> how are you doing in your class in your classes um, compared to your classmates? Like how are you how are you feeling like in comparison? Um, do you feel like I you're feel like, go ahead? I feel like I'm doing very good. I'm like. Uh, because most of my classmates, like, let's take example for first period. Most of my classmates, like, they don't really talk to our teacher. And, like, for first period, it's you need to talk to the teacher in order to pass the class. Because it's one of those classes where if you don't communicate, like, you're not going to be able to pick up this stuff. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, that's huge, man. I mean, honestly, that's one of uh, the key feedback um, answers that I give people about something that I would have wanted to do more of when I was your age and that's um, engage more, ask questions, like raise my hand more because I feel like uh, a lot of times people are nervous to raise their hand or say something because they don't want to be wrong but uh, yeah. you actually have the benefit of uh, learning things more deeply um, by raising your hand and you know, having some like anxiety or butterflies in your stomach, so to speak, um, to like create uh, moments in your brain and your memory where you remember that content a little bit more uh, easily. Yeah. Got it. What um, What else you got, man? Like, um, I know we we talked about school a, a little bit, but what about um, like extracurriculars? Like uh, your your friends and staying in contact. How are you doing that? Um, me and my friends stay in contact. Like we either text each other or we'll call each other. Like on um, like on an app called Discord. Like you can uh make like a big, very, a very big like chat. And, like okay. you get whole class. Or, like your all your friends and everything. And like they could just uh be in one big group chat. And, like you can call them and stuff. Got you. Now, is that just voice or is it voice and video? Um, you, you there's options where you like you can turn on your camera or you can turn off the camera, and it's voice. Okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's voice and video. So how do you how do you all typically do it? Is it uh, just voice or is or or is it all all of the above? Like, what what's the uh, norm for you guys? Usually, um, it's voice, and because we like to play video games, while we're on Discord. So like we'll play a video game with each other and then get on the Discord call and just use our and just talk to each other off from the Discord call. Got you. Got you. So you just like put your uh, your phone on speaker and and then play your games. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Cool, man. Cool. What uh what else um how how else are you staying like engaged with your uh, friends or family during during everything that's going on? Uh, sometimes like uh. They'll come over, or like we'll go play basketball with each other. Okay, nice, nice. And how are you? How are you? Um, so when you when you go out, how are you uh, protecting yourself? Um, I usually wear a mask, and then well, I have my stone, but I mean my crystal, but that's for like that's for my personal use and stuff. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, in terms of. Cause I mean the masks are definitely uh, important. What 
what are you doing like to stay like healthy and all that good stuff um every morning like i do a little workout uh or go play basketball and then i'll like do a little workout then i'll stretch and stuff and then like usually when i come home it's like almost time for me to start school so i'll just do my little workout after i uh, get home from playing basketball and like i'll stretch and then i'll get in the shower real quick and then i'm right, ready for school nice nice what uh what type of ex exercises do you do if you don't mind me asking um sometimes like i lift my weights like i have weights that are like, on my uh dressing and i lift them and then i do some push-ups nice man okay do you uh do you document um like how many reps you do or anything like that i just go until i get exhausted okay like, i would I would challenge you, my friend, uh, to uh, start documenting like what you, wh like how many reps you do for your uh, for your exercises, and okay. then that'll kind of give you the ability to challenge yourself to do one more. You know, so so like you say, like you can either do it every day or you can do it like once a week or once every two weeks, and just say like, okay, I'm gonna do one more than I did last yesterday or one more than I did two weeks ago, and then just build up. And that helps you to not plateau to, um, you know, where your exercise is just too easy. Yeah. And then that'll help you to, you know, stay active, uh, um, you know, so when we come out of the quarantine, you know, you're in even better shape than you are. Yeah. So uh, you can, there are actually apps you can download on your phone that'll, uh, I have it, uh, it's, it's called a push-up app. I don't think it's any, like, cool name to it or anything. It's just push-ups. Let me see here. Uh, yeah, it's just called push-ups for, uh, in the Android app store, but, um, it, uh, uses the sensor on your phone. You know how your phone, like the screen turns off when you put it by your face? Yeah. It uses that feature to, uh, track your push-up. So you put that, you put your phone face up on the ground and then you do your push-ups over the phone and it, uh, it tracks every time you, it counts your push-ups every day. And then you can look back at your graph to see, uh, you know, the, the ups and downs, like if you miss a day or, and you can set alarm alerts to, uh, you know, every morning at whatever time you want, you know, to my phone will say like, it's time to do some push-ups. So. That's pretty cool. I, I will give it a uh, look and check it out. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, it sounds like you're, uh, it sounds like you're um, thriving, man. I mean, like you're, you know, engaged with school. You feel comfortable with school. You're exercising. Um, what, uh, uh, what are you doing? Like, um, so this is a, let me see, let me word this question properly. Cause I know you do a lot of like reading and, you know, school work, but what kind of work do you do outside of school to better Rozzy, if that makes sense. And you can ask questions if I didn't word that well. Like, well, as in better my body or like my mind? Because I'm, I'm confused. However you want to answer. Like what, I mean, like you kind of share what you're doing with your body because you're playing basketball, you're doing your push-ups, you got your weights, you got your crystals, taking showers. <laughs> Well, so the better my, well, the better myself, uh, I do meditate, and okay. that, that helps like, with, like, thoughts that, um, that come to my mind and everything. And sometimes, like, I just take walks, like, in the sun and everything, and um, I do I do something called sun gazing. It's so, like, you, just, you look up at the sun for, like, a little bit of time. Or like five or like three three to five seconds seconds and like you just basically you're just in the sun gotcha gotcha not directly at the sun right i mean you're not burning out your retinas right yeah i'm not burning out my retina <laughs> <laughs> got you so looking in the vicinity of the sun yeah okay i like it i like it sun gazing all right i'm gonna have to try that so it sounds yeah, like yeah. I, I like uh, two things that you said right there. Uh, you're getting your vitamin D, getting that energy, because uh, people have vitamin D deficiencies. 
uh, you know, in places not like Arizona where the sun isn't out all the time. So you're getting that in, staying active, and then also meditating. That's pretty cool, man. How how long, like, do you have a set time that you meditate or a set, like, position that you meditate in or a room? Like, what what does that look like without um, giving away too much of your... When I meditate, um, personally, I like it. I like to make the room dark, okay. and like, so like I'll close my like if it's daytime, I'll close my curtain, and like, like cause usually my clock is on, and so like mm-hmm. I'll like put my clock over, so like the light, like cause the blue it, it's bright, and like the light mm-hmm. is blue bright, so I usually like turn that off, and then my TV has a light on it, so I usually unplug my TV and stuff, and like okay. I'll have my phone on. me. And then like I put my put my earbuds in, and there's something called DMC wave, and so like, you listen to it while you meditate, and it's supposed to like further your meditation. Like, so I Got usually it. do that. Got it. And about how long do you? How long does that go? All right. Until my mind is clear. Like, about like until like I'm relaxed and like at ease. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. I like it, man. I actually. Um, well, one, I, I meditate as well. Um, and I, I used to go to a guided meditation studio um, before I moved to where I live now. And the guided um, meditation teacher, uh, she said that a lot of times people get stuck meditating because they're trying to push out their thoughts. You know, they're thinking about, you know, what's that? For me, when I meditate, I let my thoughts flow. There you go. That's what I was getting at. That's what I was getting at. So, yeah, they said that you let your thoughts flow instead of trying to block them. You know, you um, you uh, let it let it come through and let it pass. You know, so you you, uh, let it flow. So good job there, man. I like it. I like it. and then you said, okay, so the sun gazing, the vitamin D, taking walks, meditating. I mean, it sounds like you got it figured out, man. Yeah, I like it. I like it. What about, um, like, are you reading anything for pleasure or? Uh, I do read a book called The uh, Borrow Hill. Okay. I think I told you about it before, but um, it's about this guy and he, like just his dad was a writer and everything and then like his dad like, had this big old library and he used to read and then his dad like went away and so like he had to like read and he wanted to explore the library with his sister and then like, it's pretty cool. okay yeah you did tell me about that i didn't know that was uh a leisure book so that's not for school yeah that's not school okay nice man do you do you typically read a certain amount like every so often, or do you just get kind of get lost in it and just read a lot at one time, or how do you, how do you typically go about like reading if you've even thought about that? So I read when like, I don't have that much to do, and, like if I'm finished or anything. So if it's lunchtime, I'll usually read while I eat lunch and everything. And then like I'll go exercise like, for a little bit, and then like I'll start, and then I'll go back to school. Got it, got it. I like it, man. I like it, like it. Any anything else you want to uh, share here on our our first uh, outing? No, well, man. That's pretty much it. All right, sounds good, man. Well, yeah. I mean, like this. I think this was pretty cool. Well, um, what uh, what can we look forward to in the future? Like, what are some some topics you want to bring people in on, or, or or talk about, or or is there anything you want to uh, know from me? Like, what's like, because this is yours. I'm just trying to. I'm just here to help, man. All right. Well, next time, I want to ask you some questions about your child. Is okay. What you about me? I want to ask questions about you next time. Next time. All right. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. Well, uh, I'm going to, like, we can sign off. Don't don't log out, but we'll sign off. Um, right. So uh, you want to end with, like, a little, like, catchphrase? You got any You got any outros or anything like that? I have one, and it's pretty tough. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it, goes, it goes, like, game, game, little 
All right. All right. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, you know, it works. It works. Let's make it happen. All right, my friend. Until next time. All right, man.